Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Thanks for tuning in today. Today you'll be interested to know that I will be working on an evaporative emission system. Yes, trying to find a leak for the elusive 1457 code. Be quiet. That's my scan tool over there. I've already pulled a code and as I mentioned, it's a 1457, which is a small evaporative emissions leak. If you get a 1456, there's a possibly a good chance maybe your gas cap isn't tight and just retighten that. But a 1457 is a little bit more involved. I'm going to cover my steps for diagnosing one of these in this video. Stay tuned. Before we get too deep into this, just a little bit of background on what the evaporative emission system does for your vehicle. Gasoline or petrol or whatever you want to call it, if you leave it sitting out, it will evaporate and go into the atmosphere. And that is pollution just like the pollution that comes out of your tailpipe. So they want to try to prevent that in the vehicle. Therefore, what they do is they sequester any fuel vapors or anything in the fuel tank and put them in a charcoal canister and keep them there until the appropriate time, like you say you're driving down the highway or something. Then they open up a series of valves to allow those vapors to go into the engine to be burned. That is a super simple explanation of what this does. Uh, but in addition to controlling those vapors, there's also monitors on the system to detect if there's a leak. Hence the reason why we're here today. Be quiet, scan tool. That's just a brief overview of what the evaporative emission system does. It helps control fuel vapor within the fuel system and keeps it out of the atmosphere. Now, in my experience, evaporative emissions codes rarely cause any kind of engine performance issues. In fact, you probably wouldn't even know uh, that there was an issue if the check engine light didn't come on. However, they should be addressed because you don't want those fuel vapors getting into the atmosphere. But additionally, say you get some other check engine light that is engine performance related, you wouldn't know because your check engine light is already on because of an evaporative emissions issue. So you really should address these issues when you can. Now, before I get too far into this, I want to talk about one of the important tools that you may need to diagnose a P1457, and that is a smoke machine, which is what I have here. And what this machine does is it produces smoke under a little bit of pressure and puts it in the system. Where there's a leak, the smoke will leak out and that smoke will indicate where that leak is. So it's very helpful in finding those leaks. There are other machines out there. I'm using the leak tamer here uh, and you can also make your own. But here's something that's critically important to this. When you're working with EVAP systems in particular, this is a low pressure system. You don't want to run shop air through it because you'll damage something. So you need to be able to throttle down the pressure to like one PSI. It's really not that much that you need. And that's kind of what this does here. This also has an indicator to tell me how much is leaking out. So that's, that's pretty darn helpful to not only help you diagnose if there is a leak, but when you found it. Another important tool in diagnosing evaporative emission leaks is a bi-directional scan tool, which is what I have here. And what I mean by bi-directional is not only is it capable of pulling the codes, such as the 1457 that you see here, but it's also capable of sending commands to the system, which is going to be important for checking the solenoids within the system. So we'll be able to command those solenoids on and off from this. Now you can do this with a couple of wires connected to a battery and you can activate those solenoids directly, but it's much easier to do with a bi-directional scan tool. And this is often where I start my diagnosis of an evaporative emissions leak, is I go through to see all the solenoids and things that I can turn on and off on the, on the uh, scan tool. And I do that and I listen for them on the vehicle to see if they're actually working. Now I've gone into my scan tool and I've pulled up the uh, EVAP test that I can do or, or things that I can activate with this tool. I think what we're going to start with is just activating the purge control solenoid. We'll turn that on and off and we'll listen to see if we can hear it click. On this vehicle, the purge control solenoid is located right up here close to the throttle body. All right, so now I can command it on and off. Right now it's on. You hear that? That tapping. All right, turn it off. Turn it on. Off. Back on. Off. So I can be reasonably sure that the purge control solenoid can work electronically because I can hear it activating. If I wasn't getting a response whenever I was turning it on and off, I might be looking, taking a closer look at the purge control solenoid to see how that was working. But it sounded like it was working to me, so let's move on. We're now underneath the vehicle behind the fuel tank. This is the charcoal canister, which is a part of the evaporative emission system. 
Uh, this is the uh, two-way valve on the canister, also an electronic valve. I'm going to activate that one now and see if it works. All right, I'm going to command it on to see if I hear it. And I did. Just that little tap is all you might hear. On. Off. On. Off. It doesn't sound great, but it does sound like it's working. Over on this side of the charcoal canister is the vent shut solenoid valve. And I'm going to do the same with this and activate it and deactivate it to see if I can hear it. Turning on. Off. On. Off. Now, I'll be honest, I really don't hear anything happening on this one. And some of these you might not hear, but I think I should be hearing something, but I'm not. Now, despite the fact that I didn't hear anything from the vent shunt solenoid valve, I'm going to leave that be for now and just focus on the leak. To do that, there are a couple of different ways to go about it. Uh, you may notice this little green cap down here, and that is your window into the evaporative emission system. So I'm going to remove that cap. Luckily, they kept the cap as part of this assembly. Now, if you're doing this and there's a Schrader valve down inside of here, remove it. If you don't, the smoke machine will not flow enough stuff through the system and it'll take you forever to find stuff. So if there's a uh, Schrader valve, which I'm going to check for now, make sure you remove it before you uh, hook the tool up. And this one does have a Schrader valve in it. The Schrader valve does not seem to want to come out. Well, I'll show you how this gets hooked up and then we'll, uh, we'll show you my workaround. There's an attachment with my machine that goes to that, and there is something in here that depresses the Schrader valve, but as I said, with the Schrader valve in place, there may not be enough flow to get enough smoke into the system to find a leak, but, well, we'll find out. So I will screw this onto here, and they probably made it so it couldn't come out, maybe Loctite it in or something, uh, because if that Schrader valve leaks, that's an evaporative emissions leak. And it would probably be difficult to be quiet, scan tool. And it would probably be difficult to find because once you unplug from the system, that leak is there. But when you're plugged in, there is no leak. So that would be a tricky one to find if you ended up with one there. So I just gave up fighting and we'll just leave the Schrader valve in there because it seems to want to stay. So now I'll take the hose from the smoke machine and just plug right into that end. Most of these machines, they have a place to hook up some shop air supply, which mine's right there. So in addition to needing a supply of shop air, they usually need a power supply, 12 volt power supply in this case. And I have mine hooked up to this external battery here on the cart. Um, if you're wondering where these other clips go, they go to this light that I have here uh, that I can use to help find the leaks. Lastly, before you use your machine, make sure it's filled with the proper oil. Uh, this one has a fill up here. I've already filled it up with oil. That's all set. With all of that done, I can now turn the machine on and set the, uh, well, we'll call it the regulating pressure here. So if I want maximum pressure to go through, I can go there or I can go back here. But I can already see that there's a leak because of this guy right here. See that little black dot that's moving around? That lets me know that there's a leak in the system somewhere. If there wasn't a leak, it would be down here, and I could demonstrate that. I suppose before I demonstrate that, I should demonstrate the smoke coming out of here. So we'll turn it on. You can see that there's smoke just pouring out. But if I plug it off, watch what happens to this little black dot. See how that dropped down to the bottom? So when there's a leak, a big leak, it goes up to the top. When there's no leak, it goes down to the bottom. That'll be an important indicator of whether or not we've found our leak. With everything hooked back up, I'll turn it on. And you can see our leak is, according to this, uh, 40 thousandths or about one millimeter in size. So that actually tells you the size of the leak. And then we got smaller ones down here for like half a millimeter and a quarter size millimeter. So it'll detect leaks down to a pretty small size. Now the machine is hooked up. We can see that we have a leak. It's up in the air, but now we're gonna go looking for that smoke that might be coming out. And this system is designed for UV light, but unfortunately the light that came with it didn't come with a proper battery pack and I can't use it, but I do have this UV light that I can use. 
uh, to help me find a leak. White smoke shows up better under ultraviolet light. And I don't think it's a special kind of smoke. I think it's just white smoke. But anyway, let's go uh, looking around the evaporative emission system for our leak. Additionally, it came with some uh, amber glasses to uh, help the ultraviolet work even better. I'm gonna start my search back by the canister. Oh, there it is, look. We got smoke. It's pretty easy to see, actually. It's kind of everywhere in here. Now I just need to find out where it's coming from. Now a common leak on Hondas, particularly of this vintage, is this valve right here, and we're close to it. So I'm just gonna pull this tube off. And I can actually feel stuff coming out of here, and you can probably see it too. See it? There's our smoke come rolling out. So I think this valve is bad. All right, I'm gonna plug it off and you watch this black dot. Should drop down slowly until it goes to zero if I found the leak. That may not be our, in the entirety of our leak. It's certainly something, but it looks like there's still something happening. I'm gonna try something and I wanna show you something at the same time. If you're having trouble finding a leak, this guy here could be your friend. And what this is, is it goes where the gas cap goes on here like this. So rather than tying into that uh, green thing under the hood, I've closed that up and now I can run the smoke directly into the fuel tank. And it pretty much shows the same result back here. It sort of calmed down and came down to here. And I still have the canister vent blocked off. I blocked it off with that little blue plug. Now I'm wondering if the valve itself might be leaking and I can't quite see the smoke. I don't really know. I have seen these leak externally and knowing that I have a problem here, I'm going to replace this and then recheck it. And this may involve, well, removing this from the vehicle because, well, things get a little rusty. And some of you might be wondering, why was the smoke coming out of this cross member? Well, follow this line that comes out of that vent. So it comes out of here, goes up over here into this valve, then it loops back around and then goes vents right into this area. So it would vent right into the area above this in the suspension. So that's where it would go. So it makes sense uh, with that leak being here at this valve that it would allow the smoke to pass through here and come down into this area. I'm very sorry, but you were so in the way. Yeah, it's never gonna happen. It doesn't help that somebody smashed that connector. I just have to cross my fingers that that's gonna drop down out of there. Awesome. I believe you can purchase the troll coke canister with these, with this already installed. Might be something to consider. And you may want to consider that because this is kind of coming apart on me despite my efforts with penetrating oil. Let's see if I can't salvage this in some way. Maybe I can epoxy these screw hole downs back down inside there. That's what I'm hoping for. Otherwise, I gotta work something else out. Here's the part number for the valve that I'll be using. I think I've got it sorted out as far as fastening it. But given that corrosion usually causes this, might not be a bad idea to consider replacing the whole canister that comes with this guy and everything. I don't think it's that much more. Uh, the main thing is I want this O-ring to seal. And I'm just gonna spray this with a little silicone spray before I insert it to make sure that it goes in and doesn't roll over. All right, so I know that that O-ring is sealed. I think as long as one side's held in, good. We should be fine. 
And then I'm just gonna, since it's plastic, I'm gonna run this guy in and this washer spaces it up far enough to where I'm hoping it's not an issue. I think that'll do nicely. Gonna leave that unhooked for the moment so that we can demonstrate whether or not we solved it. Moment of truth. Let's see if this comes down. We'll give it a minute. Then again, maybe not. Oh, evap leaks, so much fun. We've definitely solved the leak here though. There's no more stuff coming out of this, which is fantastic. But I think the other one is probably this other valve. And when we activated it, it might've made it angry. I pinched this off, it starts dropping down rapido. Oh yeah. So it is this other valve. So we needed two different valves for this. And I gotta order this guy, the VSV. Also, when I take this line off the canister right here, you can see it coming out. In fact, we should slow it down a little bit. You can kind of hear it. And we were actually clued into this when I did the initial test of checking to see if everything clicked. This valve did not click. Nobody had this guy in stock, so I had to order it and it'll be here tomorrow, but I can work on getting this one off of here now. I should have included in the tool list penetrating oil. Because <laughs> if you're working on this and it's old and crusty like this one is, well, well. And there it is. Maybe you're curious like me and you just want to see if this thing can click on its own. So I've got my power probe and I'm just going to, it's hooked up to a battery and I'm going to supply power and ground to it. Although I have to admit, I don't know the direction of polarity. So I do hear something. But that doesn't mean it's working because this guy was leaking and it clicked. New part will be here tomorrow. We'll install it. It'll only be a couple seconds for you though. As promised, the new part has arrived. Let's install it and see if we still have a leak. While these bolts are out, I cleaned some of the rust off of them to make it go together easier. Let's get the machine hooked up and see if it's sealed. All right, we're all hooked up. Ready to turn on the machine. And this will start out up here, but I'm hoping that it will slowly make its way down. Well, let's check things out and look for leaks. So the first thing I did was remove this guy here, this pipe, and I can see a little bit of smoke around this area. And when I plug off the valve again with my finger, I might be able to see that that leak is going down again. Well, that's a brand new part. I'm going to plug this off completely and see if we can't uh, get rid of our leak here. All right, I took one of my plugs and plugged off the valve completely and that stops the leak. So super disappointing that a brand new part out of the box is bad. And right there proves it. Well, here's something that might interest you. Because of all this tape and damage to this connector, I just decided to unplug it and see if the leak was still present. You can see I've removed my plug and everything from this valve. The machine is on and right down there, it's at zero. Weird, like totally weird. I don't know if the valve was shipped partially open. Really not sure what the deal is here. Plug it back in, nothing coming out. Still, the leak is sealed, but I'll take that as a win and that it seems to be fixed and repaired. So the valve was partially open, whatever, unplugging it, allowed it to close fully. I'm not sure. I'm going to take a look underneath that tape and see if there's some kind of issue with the wiring. And if there isn't, or if there is, I'll fix it. If there isn't, well, I think it's time we uh, move on here. Well, that could very well be the issue. 
janky, barely begins to describe it. I think I'm gonna take this one step further. Rather than try to reconnect this broken connector, I think I'm gonna look for another similar connector to see if I can find one in some harnesses that I have laying around and just replace this so that it's an actual connector. Upon closer inspection of this connector, it just keeps getting worse, like it's literally falling apart and it's destroyed. But I've often questioned <laughs> whether or not keeping a bunch of things around like old wiring harnesses off of engines is a good idea. Well, at times like this, it's a really good idea because it just saved my bacon. So I believe I've found a connector that will work. And just for the heck of it, I have the old valve here. That's gonna work. And I just need to determine what's happening with the wires. So I pulled up the wiring diagram. Let's go have a look. And I believe this is the valve that we're dealing with. Um, I actually found a TSB on this. Anyway, uh, it looks like it's getting power from the black orange wire and the computer grounds the light green red wire is the way it looks. So it, it, there's a terminal one and a terminal two here. And when I scroll up this TSB a little bit, looks like terminal one is the black orange and terminal two would be the light green red. And if you look closely at this connector, you see this little dimple that comes down on terminal two. That's how we can identify it. Here's what we have on the car. There's the light green red and then the brown wire with the stripe here. So this one here is the computer ground and this other one should be the power feed. Looking at our connector, light green red will be here on the left. There's that same dimple. And then the other wire will go to this side. So I now have the ignition switch on and I just wanna verify uh, that I have power at this black or brown orange stripe wire. I have a power probe to verify that. So there it is. I have power on this wire. The other wire is the signal wire, the green one. I got nothing there at the moment. So we're correct in what we're seeing here and I just need to wire it up. To be honest, I really don't think it matters what goes to what because I believe this is just the solenoid and it can be energized in either direction. So, but I would like to try to be in keeping with what Honda originally intended for this system. The strong gas smell coming out of this guy right here. In fact, it has me a little bit nervous. I'm gonna plug that guy off. That should help. I'm about to add a heat source right here. When I uh, solder these together, last thing I want is a bunch of gas fumes around here while I'm doing that. Fuel vapors are very volatile more so than the fuel itself. Yeah, it smells gone. I just want to make absolutely sure that I don't smell anything else before I fire this heat gun up. Seam Ripper, your best friend with electrical work. I wager that should work better than what was there. I'm not going to connect that just yet. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the smoke machine. Once again, check it for leaks. And then I'm going to activate this valve with the scan tool to see if it opens and closes correctly. And if it does, we'll call this repair done. Everything's hooked up and installed. I've got the scan tool connected. Get some smoke going. There's nothing going through it at the moment. We're back at the uh, valve now, and it's commanded off at the moment. There's nothing coming out of it. Doesn't appear to be a leak. You can see this guy down here. Now I'll turn it on. Not much happening here. I can barely hear it. It's a lot quieter than the other one was. So just for the heck of it, I've got the old valve plugged in here and I'm going to command it on then off on off. This guy's working good. This other guy, this new one, 
I have my doubts. It's just not <laughs> giving me definitive clicks like this one is. Here's the new one doing the same commands on and off. On. Off. You can hear something happening, but it's not giving me a lot of confidence. But I think the main thing we've come here to do is to make sure there aren't any more leaks. And that is something we appear to have done. Well, I've cleared the codes and they don't appear to be coming back, or code, I should say, that 1457 doesn't appear to be coming back. I think I'm out of the woods with this. I'm gonna keep an eye out on it. If the check engine light does come back on with a 1457, I think I'm gonna put my sights on that canister valve that I had questions about and replace that with a Honda part and see if that solves the issue. Can only do what we can do, right? Real quick, I think it's worth mentioning that just because the check engine light is out after you're done completing your work, that does not mean that it may not come on later. The way evaporative emission codes often work is there has to be a series of events or a series of drive cycles that have to happen before any tests are run. So it may take some time for that code to reset. However, in some cases you can with a scan tool fool the system into doing its checks early. Not all scan tools are capable of that, but just know that even though the check engine light may be out initially, it could possibly come back again later. Hopefully it doesn't. Well, it's been a couple of days. Uh, my son drove it around about 100 miles and no check engine light. I'm gonna call that fixed. As you've seen in this video, evaporative emission codes can be, well, a challenge to try to sort out and often require special tools in order to get the job done. As I said, you can do some homemade tools in place of the smoke machine. I suppose if you could lightly pressurize the system, you could also use a squirt bottle with some soapy water in it and look for the bubbles uh, as far as trying to find the leak. In fact, that may be helpful even with a smoke machine to try to find particularly small leaks, which can be extremely difficult to detect. A lot of times I smell them before I see them or I hear them. And, uh, you know, I'll just go around, I'll listen, I'll smell for a fuel smell and try to follow that. So follow your nose. You know, there's really no cut and dried way to do this. The better you know the system and how it operates, the better you'll be prepared to tackle it. But if you've got a 1457, well, this may be what you're looking at. And I hope the information in this video was useful to you. I'll put links down in the description to tools, parts, all, the, all kinds of stuff uh, that are related to this video. So check the description for additional information. I'm also gonna put a link to airatthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions not covered in this video. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.